I'm telling you right now, men give each other a pass on quote being disciplined because you're making money or you're good at job or networking with other men. But when it comes to cheating, being honest, being transparent, walking the walk, men give each other a pass in a certain bubble, obviously. Not the men in my life, the men in your life, you know. The men on the internet give each other a pass because, oh, at least he's rich. At least he has money. At least he has status. No, right? Like, no, absolutely not. So let's jump into this story about D&D and the D&D bubble about Gabe Hicks because it recently just came out that he's pulling an Andrew Huberman, cheating with multiple women who didn't know about each other, even though he had the option to not cheat on anybody, even though he couldn't have been honest and transparent, the man chose the Andrew Huberman route. And I don't get it. I don't even understand this like need, except it's gotta be Machiavellian. It's gotta be malicious. In some capacity, cheating, sleeping with other people's married partners, breaking up relationships, like not even considering the way you're impacting other people or yourself is so like disgusting and undisciplined that honestly, it's giving me the ick. I'm gonna become a celibate monk in the mountains just to get away from how disgusting your aura is right now. Okay, thank you. So what I've got here is I've got a video compilation of the TikToks that I found in regards to this. We're gonna start with the initial person, Cam, who came out to talk about their relationship with Gabe Hicks. And we're gonna hear it from them and from the people involved in Gabe Hicks's circle bubble, uh, how it's impacted their communities. And I'm happy to say some of the organizations that have even worked with Hicks have fired him, which I'm a part, I think that's good. I don't think you want a brand risk or somebody who's going to do this to people as a part of your brand. So with the Andrew Huberman case, people were like, how does this impact his work? I think probably it could or it could not, depends on the brand. But more than anything, if you've got an organization preaching consent, preaching you know dignity in how we treat human beings, preaching a lot of things, you probably don't want a Machiavellian serial cheater who's convincing all the other women in the group that the other women are just stalkers or crazy. The overlap between Andrew Huberman's story and Gabe Hicks is actually insane because both men convinced the other women that the other women in their lives were actually just stalkers and crazy. Why do they choose this route so none of the other women ever have to deal with each other? Tell me that's not Machiavellian. Tell me that's not malicious. Tell me that's not 40 chess thought out. So let's go ahead and go through it because I am constantly disappointed and, and uh, holding out, you always think, you know, and this is, this is my fault for holding on to the attachment. You always think, well, man, you know, they say pretty words. If only the actions followed. Now, I don't know much about the D&D bubble, but I'm just tracking this onto other experiences I've had where, again, you have these progressive men in these progressive bubbles, or even these conservative men in these conservative bubbles, you know, talking about dignity of self, talking about consent, talking about how they're gentlemen and they treat women right. While they're literally playing 4D chess, spreading STIs, abusing people, convincing people to have babies with them or live with them or, you know, spend money on them. While they're literally hopping around with different women who don't know about it. It's just a mess. So be weary, okay, of the progressive man who says he cares about your consent or your, or your dignity as a person, as a partner, regardless of gender. Okay. So um, I have uploaded these TikToks onto a separate file so I could make the audio louder, but I will link the TikToks when I upload this video. If you guys want to find their channels, their channels are featured on their TikToks, so you guys can go ahead and read those. So this is Cam. This is the person who originally came out with the story. Hi, I wanted to take a moment to address the... Can you guys also let me know how the audio is? The shitstorm that has been going on the last couple days surrounding Gabe Hicks. Up until Sunday, Gabe Hicks was my partner. We were in a monogamous relationship at his suggestion. We were previously polyamorous and primary partners. We started seeing each other in August at Gen Con. I have pictures, texts, uh, phone logs, and witnesses to prove everything. Gabe told me he was single when he started sleeping with me. I now know that wasn't the case. He was in a monogamous relationship with another woman up until November. In October and November, he came to Chicago, uh, visited me in my home, and told me that he was in love with me. At the same time, he was also seeing two other creators in the TTRPG space, Jillian and Maisie. 
It's important to note that we were polyamorous at this time, but we were serious about each other. You can cheat in open and in polyamorous relationships. Remember, cheating is only a thing because you've negotiated an expectation of behavior. So cheating could be anything from sharing your feelings with somebody else to touching someone else's shoulder. You can even negotiate in your relationship that cheating is hugging other people. Now, I think that's kind of insane and definitely like borderline abusive controlling, right? But that is what cheating is. So remember, you can only cheat if you've negotiated something. Not not this assumed like, hey, that's cheating. Not this. Now, there's some cultural assumption we make, some bubble assumption we make. Like usually if you're in a relationship with someone, you don't sleep with somebody else. Usually, right? But not all bubbles are the same. So making that assumption is probably not good. You probably don't want to assume anything. You probably want to have the conversation. So I was in a polyamorous relationship as an example, and I was cheated on. And that was very like frustrating because, well, they didn't have to do that, but they obviously made that decision because they thought it was the best. And peace and love, that was many, many years ago now, and it doesn't matter. But at the time, it was really, really soul crushing because we were in an open relationship. We had options to sleep with people. Now, I vetoed sleeping with this one person, which in hindsight was really wise of me because that person ended up turning out to be a stalker that I had to go to go to court for and it was a whole mess of things and this person's mentally ill and so I send them no hate now in hindsight after therapy and with all the wisdom I've collected being introspective I recognize stalkers are insanely sick people right and that's why they do what they do and it's very sad and in this situation notice that Andrew Huberman and Gabe Hicks both use the storyline to keep these women away from each other that the other women are just stalkers they're crazy and because we often don't hold compassion for stalkers and within reason think to stay away from them, we forget that they also are people who are suffering. And so I think if I had recontextualized my situation with that woman in my life so many years ago and I had remembered that she was suffering in a way that could be dangerous to other people, maybe I could have explained in better detail why – to the people around me, I was so hesitant to trust her because even the people around me were like, yeah, she's kind of weird, but maybe she's okay. And she went on to falsely accuse multiple people in the community. Because remember, like there's a there's mentally something unsound about people that are willing to stalk you, which means that they're willing to go further as well, usually for attention. So with all my peace and love, I hope these people get the help they need. But what's more ironic? The stalker that's definitely mentally ill and all of us have a lot of resentment for often and often we think these people should be in jail. Why? Because they lie and spread rumors and convince people to do things that is so outside of their usual moral compass. And the irony is we don't hold men who are not stalkers, who are Machiavellian, if anything, to less of a standard. Even though, ironically enough, you could say the stalker has a mental illness and maybe should give, be given more leniency, the men in our lives that use, abuse, spread STIs, convince people, lie to people, move people around like little chess pieces, they're given more leniency usually because unlike most stalkers, they come with fame, status, or money. And in this situation, we have two people, one being Andrew Huberman, who's much more interesting but connected to Gabe in the sense that they're both similar tropes of men, who are willing to do this to multitudes of people and are given far less backlash than a person who stalks. And though they are not the same, I'm never comparing things one to one, I tend to ask myself, okay, why is this person, who's obviously mentally ill, hated more than the man who's obviously, quote, not mentally ill, but is in deliberate, intentional action hurting so many people maliciously? Now, again, you and I want to have this discussion. We want to explore these ideas, but the general public, like, they, they don't care. They just want their side to win. So if you're pro-Andrew Huberman, you think he's a hero. If you talk about your morals, you might think he's like icky. But then if we think about a stalker, we're like, oh my God, these are the worst, most horrible people. So horrible that instead of confirming that these people are stalkers, which newsflash they turned out not to be, we trust the men who are tricking us in this moment, thinking we're smart enough to trust these people. We're in a relationship with these people. These people can be trusted. In hindsight and through humility, you realize like, oh, I chose wrong. And that's so much like that's what part is your responsibility. But everything else is theirs. You're responsible for choosing, but they are also responsible for everything that happened to you. Right? Because they did it to you. No one told Andrew Huberman. Nobody told Gabe Hicks to cheat on these women. No one told them to keep them secret. Nobody told them to paint them as stalkers. Nobody told them to do anything. 
They actually just chose to do it. Now, if they come out and say, I'm mentally ill, I've got a severe mental illness, let, we'll talk about leniency. But if none of these men are severely mentally ill, have no reason or rationale for why they would choose this except malicious intent, then why would companies work with them? How could this not impact their work? If they're willing to do this to the people intimately in bed with them, in their homes with them, they're willing to risk the safety and sanity of the children around them, then why do you think that people are thinking, well, what does this have to do with their work? Well, if they're willing to do this to the people they, quote, love the most, do you think they're not going to fuck over their jobs, their bosses, their work, their brands? Maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. Right? And look, I'm not in the D&D community. I'm not in this bubble. So I'm, I don't know these people. So I'm just learning about them with you. But from what I understand is they all fall into the specific category of people. The men do. The men in the story. Right? Like Gabe Hicks. And that's what I'm interested in. Like, what category are you? Okay, I'll stop ranting. Let's get into it. This is the initial victim, Cam, who came out with their story about Gabe Hicks. Let's let's, let's watch her video. Um, I bought his niece a Christmas gift. We told each other that we loved each other. And this was, this was my first time being in love since a very difficult relationship about three years back. I asked Gabe multiple times if he was partners with anyone else, interested with anyone else. I'm sorry, people in the comments are saying, don't women do this? Okay, obviously, if we're talking about women, that's a different category of women. So in terms of like categories, this is a specific category of men who have the same pattern of behavior. If you can give me a woman with this pattern of behavior, we can cover her story as well. But right now we just have men coming out. So if there is a man or a woman with this specific story, I'm happy to cover her. It's just nobody ever sends me those stories. So if you guys want to send me those stories, I'll cover it. But I always get sent men's stories because those are the ones that go viral, right? I was okay if he was, but for my sexual health and because of these sexual practices. But also, I don't know, I only know of one category, sorry, I only know of one category of woman that would string along multiple men and keep them all thinking that they're in a relationship with her and no one else. And that's usually really shitty, like girls who kind of make boys into their simps. So I know the category of woman and we've covered people like that before, but never like famous people. So if you guys have a story, send it to me. That we engaged in i wanted to change some of that um if he had other partners and he did have other partners that entire time and lied to me about it mm. he had flirty interactions with these people publicly um online in his TikTok comments you can see them for yourself and um throughout his twitter and when i would see them and bring them up and ask hey just making sure um are you interested in this person totally okay if you are i just want to know he would lie and told me that my insecurities and trauma from my last relationship and my bipolar was making me anxious. That is a huge, huge part of the uh, sign of behavior is belittling, convincing, gaslighting, Andrew Huberman gaslit, he gaslit, like it's a gaslighting technique of like, you're crazy. This is about you. My partner did that to me too at the time, again, many years ago now. But that was the other thing where I was like, hey, something seems wrong. Are you okay? Everything's fine. You're just like freaking out. This is your borderline. Like you're just depressed. And I was like, really? Because like something feels off in the relationship. Yeah, he'd been fucking sleeping with somebody else for a month. And by the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, something was fucking wrong. And so like, again, you'll call your partner out or you'll be like, hey, something's wrong. Are you okay? You'll even come from a place of like love and compassion and think like, hey, are you okay? I love you. And they're just like, yeah, like it's just you. So many men, especially, pro again, pro this is a, I'm talking about a very specific bubble here. The progressive leaning men, the liberal leaning men, um, in, in uh, this happens in the conservative bubble as well, but the men who specifically brag about being great lovers, great partners, great to their, like, like, oh my God, they're such a good person. Like they have this aesthetic of, oh my gosh, like people, they say the right things, but do the wrong things. You know what I'm saying? And it always has gaslighting. Their partners always know every story I've ever heard. And the men, you know what they'll say to me to my face. So like, I was just crazy at the time. You just don't get it. I was crazy. I just lost my mind for a time. It's, you know, I just lost it. I just totally, like, I lost it. I felt so lost. And I'm like, maybe, but can you hold yourself accountable? And again, I'm going to start talking about this more frequently. 
in a philosophy sense, especially as an individual, you want to hold yourself accountable by your own morals. And if you can't, then it wasn't ever part of your morals. That's the irony. Pay attention to when people tell you about themselves. If it's a part of your morals not to do something, then you should be the first one holding yourself accountable. You shouldn't wait for your victims to do it. And if they wait for their victims to do it, then it was never part of their moral schema. So this excuse of I was just crazy at the time is bullshit. That's an excuse. That's not an explanation. The difference would be, hey, I was crazy at the time and I did horrible things and I'm 100% at fault and this has nothing to do with my partners. I am a horrible person or I did something horrible. How about that, right? Not that they're horrible, but they did something horrible. But they don't do that. And so they say, I was crazy at the time. You don't understand. I was lonely. You weren't around. I just wasn't a vi-. like blah, 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 blah. They make excuses because it was never part of their morals to keep themselves accountable anyways. Pay attention to what people tell you about themselves. He also told me repeatedly that his interactions with these people were that of fan and creator and that they were just obsessive fans who wanted to work with him and be just like him. Men will do this. They will get with women, sleep with them, use them, throw them away, and then claim all the women are crazy. Oh, they're all cluster Bs. Oh, they're all insane. I don't know what's wrong with all these women. Well, you keep picking them, so you tell me. And they made him uncomfortable. He repeatedly called Maisie crazy and compared her to a puppy. And he called Jillian, who again, both of these people are professionals in this industry, an obsessive fan and her partner, very terrible things. He called her partner very terrible things who Mm -hmm. did not need to be involved in this at all. I am sorry, Matt. At the same time he was doing this, he was lying to both of those people and to other people about the nature of our relationship. He said that I was a crazy person who had a crush on him and wanted a relationship, but he couldn't stand to be alone with me. Most of our time together in person was spent alone because it was like pulling teeth to get him to want to meet my friends. Another uh, overlap with like the Huberman case People had a hard time getting him to socialize or be present or wanting to take photos with people or wanting to even be associated in public, very private. They use privacy as a way to keep secrets. Those Also, there's a difference between being private and keeping a secret and not wanting the public to know. That's also different too. There's a difference between saying, like, oh, I'm really private and I don't think the internet owes this, like, is owed this information about me. And then, quote, convincing multiple partners in your life that you're fucking oh, I'm just really private, so I don't want people to know we're together because you have other bitches on the side, bro. Beza says this is some psycho levels of lying and shit. Bro, that's what I'm I'm telling you right now. This is crazy. To get him to get me to meet his friends. He blamed his lack of public acknowledgement of me on the fact that he didn't want people to look at our relationship and judge it because it is an interracial one. Gay Pigs is black, if you guys don't know. It was an interracial one, and that he didn't want people to pry into his personal life um, and mix personal with professional. And I believed him. Believing what he told me about Jillian and Matt and Maisie and frankly, countless other people, because there are so many people involved in this, both femme people who he had flirtationships with or who he had sexual relationships with during this time um and just other professionals in the ttrpg community i would often encourage him to set clearer boundaries and he did not when he spoke about especially the bigger productions he was involved with to me and shared with me the details of what was going on complaining about them or um, just going through the details. I chalked a lot of the venting up to like venting about a hard day at work and I tried to be a supportive partner in that. At the many cons he went to throughout our relationships, including some of which I was at with him, he was sleeping with Mm. other people. Mm. Ooh, the way y'all are having casual sex out here and not being safe with STIs is annoying me. It's annoying me. Discord says, I know I've internalized ableism or something, but people really need to get better at sussing these people out sooner rather than later. Well, I will say, I think this is like the greatest lesson I was I was taught in my 20s was 
to listen to people when they tell you things about themselves and to pay attention, but it's really difficult because we let people genuinely, like we let people tell us pretty stories because we want to believe people are pretty. We want to believe people are good. We want to believe, and people are good. Like in a, in a much more macro sense, like we're all just like little animals doing little animal things. So like, what are you going to do about it? But on the micro through understanding who do you want to associate with, I think it's much harder to suss out those people. Like, it's so interesting to me, again, how men will tell me things and be like, I can't believe this changed how Britney saw me. And I'm like, what? People literally will come up con with conspiracy theories. Like somebody in Britney's life must have told her something about me or convinced her not to like me. Sir, you're the one who told me what a little sex fiend you are in private. You're the one who told me. Why would I need other people to convince me that like, oh, I can look at you differently now when you yourself are telling me stories. Like that's the irony is like people will think like, no, somebody else must have talked to her. Somebody else must be saying something about me. Sir, sir, ma'am, girl, human, ma'am. Oh, you must like hate Andrew Huberman because everyone's lying about him. Oh, you must like dislike. No, bro, peace and love. Like we're all animals. So who cares? But also in terms of who I want to be associated with, ma'am. Sir, you said it yourself. It came out of your beautiful mouth. You're the one who told me. How can these people literally sit there and be like, why did Brittany block me? Why does Brittany not want to talk to me? Well, you're sitting here literally showing your true colors every opportunity. People will give you chance after chance after chance and you keep fucking it up and you're like, hmm, hmm, I wonder why they don't want to hang out with me anymore. Hmm, it only, it, you know what I mean? Like the lack of accountability is amazing. Humans are going to human and this is very much a part of it. So what is your obligation in sussing out these people? What is your obligation in sussing out these people? Well, it's the obligation you have to yourself. It's up to you if you want to practice sussing out these people. It's up to you how you want to have a relationship with yourself and other people. This is why it always comes down to holding yourself accountable and your own values and morals. In my 20s, I was super naive. And also, honestly, I just, I thought like everyone's on their own journey, who cares? And I was in a polyamorous relationship and that was cool while it lasted. It was like a 10 year trying poly and it was fine. Dated women, dating men, dating you know, non-binary people. I dated everybody. Only to realize, you know what? I really can't date people with different morals than me, who make different decisions than me. It's different to have some variations here and there, but to be completely different. I don't wanna date somebody who justifies cheating. I don't want to date somebody or marry somebody who thinks it's casual to cheat. It's fine if you want to be that way. I don't think it's fine, but it's fine if you want to be that way. Okay. But I don't want to be with you. And the idea that these people are like, why? Why wouldn't you want to be with me if I'm a serial cheater? And it's like, ma'am, ma'am. Kinder says, for serious relationships, less marriage. I feel like it's a red flag if the person doesn't want you to take up any space in their life. Oh, facts. Mm-hmm right? Everyone is on their own journey. I just don't need to be a part of your journey. Do you guys know the difference? When I say like you're on your own journey, it doesn't mean that I don't have to have boundaries with your journey. If you guys want to be in a serial cheater community, you do you. But see how these Machiavellian serial cheaters want to personally target people that are good and well-intentioned? That's what makes them horrible people. It's not the fact that you all are in cheater communities, all cheating on each other. It's the fact that you choose non-cheaters, trick them into being with you, and then cheat on them and then get a heart off of it. That's the problem. You're on your own journey is such a real and fundamental part of letting go of the attachment that you have any control of the universe. That is for you, the consciousness. That's a very important part of being introspective. The other part about being introspective is your boundaries. I'm willing to have messy people in my life, but I have a line in which we interact. I'm not inviting you and your little cheating party to hang out with like my parents, right? Like I'm going to be very specific about how you interact with my life, right? Like we have to be very aware that everyone is on their own journey. It doesn't mean their whole journey needs to operate within yours. I have very complicated friendships with friends and family doesn't mean everything about them needs to have anything to do with my fucking life. Okay? So you can radically accept that people on our journey without inviting them into your bedroom or into your bank account or into your life in a very specific way. Have boundaries and that has to be about you. Your boundaries have to be about you. 
not about other people. You are not putting an ultimatum on somebody else. You are putting a boundary down for your own consciousness. And then you have to learn how to suss out people based off of, you know, recognizing what you actually want in a relationship. This person, this like very probably well-intentioned human cam, they let things slide. They let things go because things made sense. Oh, yeah, I can see it from that perspective. I can see how that makes sense. And then you have to ask yourself, even though something could make sense, is it what I want? Do I want my life to make sense in this way? Is this what I want for my life? Example, my husband chooses not to be on the internet. He wasn't on the internet before being with me, right? He's not a social media person. He's an offline husband. And when we got together, it was a conversation we had about whether or not he wanted to consent to being in any way on the internet, in any way on the internet. And he's decided not to be. And I think that's so important. But see how he's the one choosing not to be in public? It'd be different if I was like, I don't want you on my channel and I don't want people to know I'm married and I don't want this and I don't want that. Even for my OF, I keep my wedding rings on. Lots of people keep them off for branding, which is like, fine, I'm not moralizing it, but I'm not here to hide my relationship. I don't care if it's on OF. I don't care if it's on YouTube. I want everyone to know I'm married, happy and taken and I am in the greatest relationship of my life. But that doesn't mean he needs to be on the internet because it violates his consent, right? The difference in this, in the Gabe Hicks situation, it's the reverse. They're like, hey, why aren't we going out with friends? Why, aren't people, why don't people know I exist? Oh, well, for work. Oh, I don't want the hate of being in an interracial relationship with you. <gasps> that is the scummiest shit I've ever heard in my life. Can you imagine your partner being embarrassed of you, basically, that they don't want to handle what? If, we're, if being in an interracial relationship is so embarrassing for you or slash, you know, you don't want to handle the hate of it, then why? What are we even doing here? So think about that. You think you're with the love of your life and they're like, I don't want to have to deal with the repercussions of being with you. So I'm going to keep you secret. If that's not a red flag, girl, I must be colorblind. Uh, at the beginning of our relationship, he told me he had never slept with anyone at a con except for me and that I was a special exception because he was so excited to get the chance to know me. At the same time of all this, when the people he was involved with acted like they were involved with him, he would call them crazy, obsessed mm -hmm. stalkers. Oh. And this past weekend at PAX East, it got to a point where people in the industry, in the TTRPG industry, uh, stated they would not work with specifically Jillian and Matt and judged Maisie very heavily and were very rude to them because Gabe had said that they were crazy stalkers. He fucked over people's jobs, their emotions. He was romantically and sexually involved with people that he fucked over monetarily and continued to call them stalkers while leading them on. How is this not the cruelest, meanest, rudest thing I've ever heard in my life? <clears throat> How is this not? The most cruel, cruel behavior you've ever heard. That is just the, 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 the most, the cruelty. How are you able to do something like that to people? How do you sleep at night, my bro? To multiple people and to myself over months and months and months. In an attempt to protect me and to take care of me, his friends, who are very wonderful, um, judged Jillian. I judged her too. I thought she was someone who could not take no for an answer. She's not. She. No, Sophie says maybe for race, but if the person is trans or is the same sex relationship, that's completely understandable. Only if you're at threat of death, then no, it's not understandable. If I married a woman and I would like hide her from the world, then I fucking should an old yeller myself. Like, what are we talking about here? Either I'm married to the love of my life and I'm going to hold her proud or I shouldn't even, why would I put someone through that? It's different if the, if there's like a real safety issue, like if you're in a, like a fucking anti-homo, like anti-gay, like throw you off rooftops, rooftop, rooftops kind of in bubble, right? 
But ultimately, like, no. Can you imagine being married to a woman if you're same sex and then hiding her away from the world because you're embarrassed of the relationship or don't want to deal with it? Don't get married. No. Oh, if your partner's trans, like, oh, what are you ashamed? You do not deserve a partner if you're ashamed of them. Period. Even in their time. Nobody deserves anything. Just FYI, from a philosophy perspective, because we're all animals on a planet, biological creatures that have evolved over time. Nobody actually deserves anything. That's just like a construct idea. But if you're going to fall in love with the love of your life, it should probably be somebody who's proud of you, loves you, and shows you dignity in the relationship. It is undignified to be ashamed of your partner. And that's a you problem that you're projecting onto your partner. That's fucked up. Next to each other. In my opinion, which is subjective and doesn't matter. Other, which I saw, um, where he was speaking badly about me and sharing my private insecurities oh. with her. She was nothing but kind and nothing but honest and wonderful. It scares me that she and Matt and Maisie, who make their living doing this this is their source of income mm. have had their reputation slandered and have possibly lost out on jobs because gabe was trying to cover up his tracks of cheating i'm very lucky that my day job is not in the ttrpg community my income my my livelihood is not tied to this mm. but theirs is as soon as i found out the truth of everything going on i reached out to Jillian. I made Gabe give me her phone number. I reached out to everyone else who was involved, some of whom were discussing whether or not coming out publicly is good for them. And I reached out to the multiple people at PAX East who came to me stating that they promised they would not work with Jillian or Matt because of their behavior towards me and Gabe. Mm. Jillian was not lying. Jillian was not being crazy or she was never she was never an obsessed fan. Gabe was lying the entire time to everyone. There are literally so many lies and so much evidence of this that I don't just have screenshots. I have entire text conversations screen recorded going months and months back from everybody or most everybody mm. who he was involved with, some of which he tried to edit um to the point where the footage is is over an hour honestly i'm agree with you i think this just exhausted me because i've you know i've really tried to tell myself like who am i going to dedicate my time to <clears throat> what kinds of people do i want to help and like what kind of things do i want to problem solve for people and honestly i think these people are too like they're too they're just kind of like not interesting to me at this moment I've been blocking and like exiting a bunch of people from my life because I'm like, you know, I'm focusing on the people who genuinely are. Well, not they're not doing this fucking shit. OK, they're not doing this fucking shit. And honestly, I think I might. I might remove some other people moving forward, like just because I was trying to be open minded and like give them a chance to recover. But at this point, I j it just feels like if this is your M.O., then like you need to talk to somebody else, because honestly, at this point. I'm kind of over it. And I think sometimes men in these bubbles who end up do going to women for advice choose um, a certain kind of woman because they think they'll give them leniency. And I just don't want to give anyone leniency this year um, in this particular position. It's too it's too much, guys. Purposely picking targets, gaslighting your partners, picking people who are in compromising situations already, cheating, lying, playing 4D chess, all of that stuff. It's just too much. Like, there's so many people who need so much help. There's so many good people in the world. So many people who are not at this stage of hurting people, who are at different stages, different spectrums of hurting people that are just way more important in terms of how to spend time with them to me. You know what I mean? So this is just, it's too much. Like, this is exhausting at this point. You know, these kinds of men. Sometimes people ask me, like, oh, like, if Andrew Huberman slid into your DMs for, like, a call, would you do one with him? Honestly, nah. Fuck him. Put him on an island. Destroy the island. I don't care. At this point, there's too many amazing people already in my DMs trying to get help, which by the way, guys, I don't answer DMs. You have to sign up for calls or you got to sign up for the Discord, right? And you got to come to the events. But if you want one-on-one -on -one work for philosophy stuff, you, you got to book a call, right? But honestly, like, mm, nah, 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 nah. Like we're done. This year, I'm focusing on only people who are ready to get better slash people that aren't willing to do this to people and justify it. 
Balto says, did you see the cheaters versus non-cheaters on Jubilee? We had a Discord event. Jubilee videos got to be Discord events because Jubilee takes down my streams. So if you guys want me to review Jubilee videos, you have to suggest it for the Discord. We do Discord events, you know? Yeah. Just of scrolling through texts. That doesn't include Discord messages. That doesn't include Instagram DMs. That doesn't include Twitter DMs. Nothing else. Gabe spoke poorly to me about most of the people who he has worked with in this industry. Mm. He had negative things to say about many, many, many people. And I often chalked it up to venting and like to having a hard day. He lied about the nature of his relationship with many, many people. And he lied about it to an entire convention mm. full of his friends and his colleagues to hide the fact that he was cheating on me. Mm. What's difficult for me is that I am, as I said, polyamorous. And if he had told me from the beginning that he was interested in Jillian and that they were starting a sexual relationship or any kind of relationship, or if he was interested in Maisie or any of the other many people, um, I would have been okay with it. How do you be cheating in an open or poly relationship, Russ? They're monogamous because that's the way that they negotiated their relationship, but he could have negotiated for a poly relationship. I'm telling you, it's not about the sex. It's not about being in the relationships. It's it's about the cheating. It's about going behind someone's back. It's about playing 4D chess. It's something, I'm not a psychologist, right? It's something wildly immoral, right? Now, obviously, all these people need help and they should get the help they need. I'm just not going to be the one to help them because I'm not a therapist. But in terms of even philosophy or morals or ethics, like this man obviously is living in a completely different universe slash bubble, right? He had so many opportunities to not do this. I think that's why it was so hurtful when even my partner cheated on me at the time or even like I see these guys in open relationships on the internet always cheating. And I'm like, why are you cheating? Because it's not about the sex. I think they get a thrill off the convincing people, gaslighting people. I think they're abusers. And I think they play it off like it's no big deal because like who the fuck cares? But I, I think it says so much about you. That's what I'm saying. I've made... And I'm willing to make so I'm willing to meet so many people where they're at. But at some point, dude, you're just a, you're the villain, bro. At some point, you're just the villain. And even villains can come back. How many Disney movies have we seen, right? Where they're like, oh, the villain has a reason they're a villain. Okay, cool. But also, you can't be hurting innocent people just because you're the villain and like you've been hurt. So you know what I'm saying? Like, how many people in this space have we seen cheat, gaslight, do all these things? But they don't think – they're telling on themselves when they're like, yeah, I would do it again. Yeah, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Oh, well, because obviously – hello, it's like incels. Incels don't want sex. They want to be picked. Obviously, if they just wanted sex, they'd hire a sex worker. But they don't want the sex. They want to be picked. But you see how they go like, I haven't had sex with anyone. No one's ever wanted to have sex with me. You mean no one's picked you. And then it's not even that no one's picked them. It's like the people they want to pick them haven't picked them. So they victimize themselves and make themselves out to be just like, oh, me. It's all about me. What an ick, bro. And he was the person who suggested we be monogamous. Why would he suggest they be monogamous? So stupid. He put my sexual health at risk. He put the sexual health of many other. Huberman also told these women he wasn't seeing anyone else. Right? And he wasn't using contraceptives, and he was also putting these women at risk. People at risk. He ruined the reputation of many, many people mm -hmm. for no real reason. He affected well, their the real reason would honestly be a therapist would probably figure it out. It's probably mental health. Like, it's probably something, an internal mechanism within them. That's why I say I'm not a th therapist. Like, I'm obviously a philosophy person in terms of morals and ethics. Like, I love discussing that stuff. Like, why do we do what we do? But particularly, it, though it seems like it's no real reason, there is absolutely a reason. The question is, who is the right professional to find it? Probably a therapist, if I'm being honest. Their income. Which is why my heart does want to kind of go out to them a little bit, where I'm like, oh, that's your mental health, bro. You're fucked up. See, this is, this is my, this is the demon within myself I will fight constantly. The part of my brain that's like, oh, you're obviously mentally ill. I wonder what's wrong with you. 
I feel bad for you because that's a horrible place to be in. And then the part of myself that's like, you know what? It's not an excuse though. Like it's an explanation, but it's not an excuse because people don't just do these things. You don't actually come up with this many layers of manipulation for funsies. You have to be such a specifically minded human with a specific relationship to self, with a specific relationship to your own brain and trauma and everything else that it's not, it just, I refuse to believe it's casual. It makes no sense. There has to be a why. And the question is, what is the why? Right? What is the why? And I would love to find that out, but a girl, he needs to be examined and their ability to get jobs. And this is an industry that is heavily based in networking and heavily collaborative. So doing this was a career death mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Toxic women will say men are creeps and awful and they don't want to associate them. Men will say women are crazy and they don't want to associate them. So the toxic side of femininity is they'll say men are creeps and people shouldn't work with them. And men will say women are crazy, you shouldn't work with them. Pay attention. And he used his fame to keep us quiet. Gabe told people that me and him weren't serious. I met his parents. I met his niece. She called me Auntie Cammy. Last week, we were discussing eventually moving in together. Ooh. He used to joke to me about what our kids would look like. Oh. I'm ashamed that I believed him. And I'm ashamed that I badmouthed people in this industry. Believe well, it's not your fault you believed him. You just... you. You, within good reason, believed him, right? That. But there is a part of you that feels so shitty. Like, how did I, how did I do that? You know what I mean? They were crossing his boundaries. There is so much more. There is honestly at this point, God. Yeah, I think this category of man, I'm just so over. I'm just so over them. They're so annoying. Like they, they make every excuse and they never get better. Like I'm so holding out for Sneeko, but he's he's in this category of man. I'm kind of holding out for destiny, but he's in this category of man. Like ultimately, they're still in this category of man. Huberman, I want to hold out for him too, but like I just don't care anymore. God, I just don't care. I want to care, but I think I'm too tired to care this year. And I think I want to focus on like people who really are better off and getting better and not doing this and justifying it. Yeah, I think it's time to let it go, which is such a relief in some ways. But I was really holding out. I think I'm going to have to let go of the attachment I have to not the outcome but the hope yeah that they'd grow up and kind of treat people better and admit that there they've been pieces of shit instead of just blaming the women for being crazy in their lives but i think it's time to let it go bros i do i think it's time to let it go Ugh, kind of relieved though honestly because i'm sick of it bro i'm sick of these stories yeah i don't want to be i just let it go yes koala let it go i just gotta let it go yeah, I want to meditate on this. It's hard, though, because you think, like, you see the good in them. But it's not enough, bro. It's just not enough. It's not enough good. But it's still good. Like, I know they're not, like, you know what I mean? They're still good. But, man, I'm exhausted just thinking about it. Yeah. I think it's that time of year. I think it's time to let it go. Yeah, I think it's time to block and delete numbers and... Hope people figure it out, but like, not my problem. Damn. K says level six time, bro. Level six, guys. Level six. <laughs> yeah, bro. Mm. Well, good luck. Good luck, bros. Oof. Good luck. At minimum six years of this exact behavior from him. I'm mm. trying to figure out how to organize all of this and who's comfortable with what being released. But he ruined multiple lives. Oof. From the very top. I okay, so this is Gabe. So Gabe put out an apology, but then he deleted everything on social media. Spring cleaning. Yes, Alice. It's spring cleaning. It's spring cleaning. You know what I mean? It's spring cleaning time. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm no one's mother, so I don't have to hold out. But bro, there are better people who need my attention, you know? So let's do that now. Um, this is So this is Gabe Hicks. He deleted everything on social media. But this was the apology he put out. Let's see if his apology matters. I, but he ruined multiple lives. From the very top, I have been disrespectful to these people. And that is my failure. That is my failure to communicate. That is my failure to acknowledge and show proper respect. Um, 
I owe a dramatic apology to both Jillian and Matt for any effect that anything I said had been had been an affecting way on their presence in the tabletop space. Um, especially as they have continued to build their own audience and brand in doing so. And acknowledging that and being forward and direct about that is the bare minimum of what to do and how to approach it and what to say. Um, and like I said, I didn't communicate and approach it respectfully and directly in a way that was comfortable and safe for everyone involved. I'm sorry, what the fuck is he saying? Ma'am, what is he saying? I've been seeing someone in a polyamorous relationship and then when that relationship had switched to monogamous, I did not clearly, properly, or directly communicate. And that is my failing. That is... <laughs> I'm rewinding that. Ma'am? And then when that relationship had switched to monogamous, I did not clearly... But he's the one who suggested they go monogamous. What is he talking about? And then if he's not... Guys... You can't be like, oh, I miscommunicated. I didn't talk clearly to my partners. Were you hiding them? Were you? He was literally saying other people were crazy. He was literally talking shit about other people he was actively seducing and then claiming, oh, he's been miscommunicating this whole time. Ma'am? Really properly or directly communicate. And that is my failing. That is my failing in making sure that everyone was actually able to opt in properly and... The mistake is mine going forward, especially for how that affected uh, anyone involved. I told horrible, horrible lies about people that were never true. Um, so my bad. I miscommunicated. That's not a miscommunication, girl. That is not a miscommunication. Girl, that is not a miscommunication, ma'am. And people reacting and any harm to reputation. This is my failure. And responsibility is the bare minimum. What? And the clear notion that like avoidance or any of the like with lack of communication is just unhealthy. Um, I've been very fortunate that someone earlier today is making the active effort to help me find a proper therapist to you know, when I tell people to go to therapy, I don't mean use it as a narcissistic tool to pretend you're getting better so you can hurt other people like in the process. When I say go to therapy, I'm saying actually face yourself, not use it as a reason to justify bad behavior. Ingrid says pol politician answer, total politician answer. This is, this is, who Maiden says that sure is a lot of words, uh, lots of words and saying nothing. Yes, aliens, lots of words and we're saying nothing at all process process as to why any part of me thought that there was any bit of social acceptable nature in the behavior and do what is necessary because no one should be at fault for any of my reactions don't praise me don't defend don't give credit um this is just as it should be the most important thing is that when people are hurt and you've done wrong, that you solely focus on doing right and acknowledging when you have been wrong. And I have been. Wow. Useless. Absolutely useless. Should have kept his mouth shut absolutely useless what the fuck was that absolutely fucking useless if i ever saw one absolutely bullshit bro yo didn't even talk about it it's like it was like um what was that girl's name miranda sings colleen ballinger talked about it but didn't talk about it mentioned things but didn't mention things didn't even like say your crime say your crime and acknowledge the crime. What? Okay, so now, going back to that Discord comment about how to suss these people out, this is one of them. The lack of accountability, the lack of self-awareness, saying things just because it sounds good. Um, ma'am? 
Yes, RK says nothing of value came out of his mouth. Absolutely not a word of value. Fucking A, bro. Okay, let's go to Maisie. Maisie is one of the women that he, or thems. I don't actually know Maisie's pronouns. Maisie is one of the humans that he was involved with, okay? Hey. That he lied about and said that they were crazy. Hey there, everyone. Um, it's me. Um, to preface this video, I wanted to say a couple of things. One, um, I apologize if my tone and my demeanor are a little bit more harsh um, or jaded. Frankly, I am very numb right now and mm. exhausted emotionally and mentally. Mm. There's likely going to be a lot of cuts um, because I, I wanted to get this out there um, and I wanted it to be succinct and to the point. If you have not seen Cam's and Jillian's videos, I have them tagged in the description. I will absolutely ask that you watch them first. They are the ones who have been the most affected by the individual that I'm speaking out on today. And um, they've both said- We did not watch Jillian's video, right? We watched Cam's and this is Maisie. I'll go find Jillian's video because I actually don't think I have that one. Everything that needs to be said and are people that you should be listening to and supporting right now. The individual in question is Gabe Hicks, also known as Gabe James Games. He has been outed as a liar, a manipulator, a cheater, and on some accounts, an abuser. And recently he hurt three different people. Wait, okay, so I have Jillian's. We'll watch theirs, we'll watch Maisie's, and then we'll watch Jillian's. Cam, Jillian, and myself. In terms of how he hurt me, I can acknowledge that I did not receive as much cruelty as he d inflicted upon Cam and Jillian. Mm. With Jillian, he was actively working to sabotage her career and was doing everything in his power to make sure she was blacklisted. Mm. Um, mm. With oh, oh, oh. It's so offensive, bro. It's so fucked up, bro. Yo, I've never been more offended in my life for somebody I've never met. Cam, I very recently discovered that he had been in a relationship with them the entire time. One that started off polyamorous and became monogamous. Gabe and I were physically intimate during both of those stages. And even when they were polyamorous, one of the most important things when it comes to polyamory is communication. Mm. And when polyamorous, he still lied to Cam about what was going on. You know, when I was poly, I practiced complete transparency, or at least I tried to. And then I tried to do that with my, I do that with my marriage now. But one of the rules was, I don't care who you date necessarily, but I'd like to meet them. So like, if you were dating anyone, we had to meet them. That was like kind of the rule. You know what I mean? And so that was like a big part of it. And I'm just curious if, that's why I'm always curious when people are poly or open, but they never introduce each other to each other's partners. Because I'm like, I want to get along with your partners. Like, I want us to be good. You know, I don't want there to be, we don't have to be friends, but we got to be good, you know? It's, I'm monogamous now, girl, but let me tell you. I think it's also important to know that during this, I had absolutely no clue about any of this. I had no clue that he was in a relationship. He told me that he was single. And trust me, I asked. Mm. Given everything that's happened to me, I asked repeatedly. Mm. I would even ask about situationships that might become relationships with other people because I did not want to catch feelings for somebody else who was already spoken for or was about to be. Mm -hmm. At one point, I even said to his face how James has left me with a lingering, constant fear that every person that I feel close to. I don't know who James is, but I have a feeling this is not her first time in the rodeo with a bad person. Um, is going to end up having a secret partner the entire time. Um, well, he did. Even during that conversation, Girl. he did the entire time. Girl. Mm. But on top of the pain that he has caused to Jillian and Cam and myself, as well as previous partners who are coming out and are attesting to his pattern of behavior, he also hurt a lot of beautiful people in this community friends and co-workers people who looked up to him and loved him and adored him because he would speak such cruel awful things about them behind their backs 
frankly, I still grapple with how somebody can have that much hate and anger in their heart to feel nothing but cruelty and malice towards people who care about them. Mm. I also mm. just wanted to extend further love and support to Cam and Jillian and everybody who's been hurt. None of you deserved this. Mm -mm. And so all of the friends who Gabe hurt and who are now finding out that somebody that they considered family and a close friend and who Ooh. worked with him finding out all the awful things he was saying, I also wanted to say that you are also allowed to grieve too. You acknowledging and feeling your pain does not diminish mine or any. You know what's interesting is there is something to be said about having like people in your community that you really, really look up to and how the disappointment is so intense because you're like, I thought you were a good person. I thought you were one of the good ones, whatever that means to you in your bubble, right? Because we all live in different bubbles with different realities and different ideas of what's good. But when you think someone is good, like truly good, and you're like, they're safe and I can trust them with people. When you say like, would you want your sister to date them? You're saying, I would trust you with someone that's so important to me. I would trust you to treat people well. That is, it is a hurt. And like I said, I do trust people with different things. I have learned not to trust people with everything, but to trust them with what they are trustworthy with, right? Now, my husband's different. I trust him with everything. But, well, maybe not being on time anywhere, you know, <laughs> You know, but everything else. So with my friends, I can and have let go of the attachment that trusting someone means I can trust them with everything. Instead, I've learned that you should respect people and their limit, like how they're limited and trust them with what you can trust them with. So when I say like I recommend this person to date, they're a really good person. They will protect you. I better know that for a fact because I am I am now using my reputation to hand this person's future over not that they're not responsible for also choosing people but you see when you trust a friend to be like hey do you trust this person that's you doing the work to double check if this person is good like the irony okay I don't know if that makes sense but the irony is when you go to your friend okay and say hey can I trust this person and your friend goes yeah I can vouch for them that's you doing the due diligence to make sure you don't end up with a bad person again or in general and so when that person doesn't do their work, you can't do your work because we do rely on the community to sort of hold each other accountable, even though in terms of philosophy, I really recommend you hold yourself accountable by your values. If you're participating in a community, that is you doing the work. I knew a person who went on like a date recommended by their friend. So their friend vouched for this guy. This guy ended up drugging their drink. And when this person went to the police and did the due diligence and do the thing, the friend who recommended the guy said, well, you must have miscommunicated to him because like he's a good person. Do good people drug your drinks? Do good people put drugs in your fucking drinks without your consent? Do well-intentioned people, do thoughtful people, do truly thoughtful people Put fucking drugs in your drink without thinking about it. Even if they're not doing it on purpose and maliciously, do thoughtful people do these things? And that person ended up choosing the guy's like side, right? Because they're like, well, that guy, I know that guy. He's a good guy. But I think what they were doing was realizing like they vouched for the guy. So they're partially at fault for anything that happened that night to that person. And that's the bullshit is that person had a date from a friend of a friend and thought, okay, I can trust my friend. Totally wholesome, good experience. Only to end up to having their drug, their drinks drugged. Bullshit, bro. Bull fucking shit. Okay? So listen. In terms of introspection, in terms of bubbles, in terms of accepting like we're all animals on a planet, all of that is beautiful, bro. And all of that is extra introspection work, which most people aren't doing. So we're not even going to talk about that right now. Most of us are just focusing on our bubbles and trying to decide how to have a good bubble, how to have good interaction with community members. Start by recognizing like not everybody who speaks a good game is acting in a good game, is acting in a good way, right? So you have to, I think, this is my prescription, okay? You don't have to believe it or agree with it. People need to walk the walk. And if you can't walk the walk, you don't talk the talk. Shh, be the fuck quiet. Be the fuck quiet. Silence like titties in your face. You can't talk silent. Shh. Nothing. 
moaning at most. Shh. Unless you can walk the walk, I don't think you're good for society. So in terms of a community, which this is why I don't belong to any of your communities, I am not going to settle for talking the talk. I want to walk the walk. I want you to be a person that I can say, because my reputation is on stake, this is a good person who will treat you correctly in a relationship. Meaning they will not cheat on you. They will not risk your body to STIs. They will not risk your body to pregnancy. They will not risk your body, your mind, or your soul. Absolutely not. And the dilemma is ultimately, here we're moving to a more introspective space, more extrospection space. You can't control what other people do. So even when you vouch for those people, recognize they might one day decide to be different than the person you've always known them to be. And so then you have to make a decision. At what point is me vouching for someone even fucking worth it? So even now, I think the thing I've learned the most is like not to vouch for people, except to say, I've worked with them. They seem nice, but I don't know what that means. Oh yeah, they seem nice, but I don't know. They could be a fucking grapist. I don't know. They could be a sex trafficker. I don't fucking know. I like people and I can trust most people. I can vouch for certain characteristics of a person. But genuinely, even that person one day could decide to be somebody different. It's very complicated being part of a community. Because you almost don't know like how to even vouch for people. Maybe they're really great when it comes to their work ethic, but they fucking like diddle little kids. It's like, fuck. Well, I don't care how good they are at their job then. Maybe they're really like good to their children, but a really bad spouse and they hit their spouse, but they've never harmed their children. I still don't want to work with them. There are certain things people can do. Like maybe you're an alcoholic, but you're really good at your job and you're a really good parent. Okay, well then you're just hurting yourself, right? If your alcoholism never impacts the people around you, then like that's your business because you're working on it. But when you're cheating, you're breaking the consent of other people. In order to cheat, you have to engage in other activity with usually other people. Unless your cheating bubble adds in masturbation and porn, which some do. Some bubbles think it's cheating to watch porn, right? Like I belong to a religious bubble that considers porn a form of infidelity, right? But that doesn't involve somebody else. And it would be much worse if they involved an actual human being. Okay. Anyone else is. Don't be more cruel to yourselves by denying yourselves that. The last thing we need is any more cruelty right now. Kindness is resistance. And sometimes the most spiteful thing you can do is love. Don't stop loving each other. A little dramatic at the end, but okay, I get it. Thank you. Before we get into him, let's watch Jillian. So this is Jillian. Gosh, I hope their audio is good because I had to increase the other videos. But hopefully this audio is okay. This is the other victim. I don't want to be making this video. Oh, no, it's so low. The play mat. Okay, and I do not deserve this. Okay, the audio is really low. Oh, I'm so sad I missed this video. You guys, everyone, turn up the volume on your phones. But here I am. Gabe James Hicks. Gabe James Games, however you know him, um, is a liar, a liar and a manipulator, a cheater, um, possibly an abuser. Um, he cheated on... He sh uh, they said possibly an abuser. I would say cheaters are abusers. I would say cheating is abusive. Especially this form of cheating, I would call him abusive. Yeah his now former partner with me and countless other people and lied to me our entire relationship and i have now found out from his former partner that he has lied about my character about who i am to a lot of people in the ttrpg sphere and i am beyond hurt by this um he and I started seeing each other and flirting um, last year into this year. Um, I have a primary partner um, who has been dragged into all of this as well because Gabe also slandered his name, um, called him terrible things mm. uh, as well. Mm. And I found out that he called me um, 
you know, an obsessed fan that I was just really obsessed with him. And um, he said that I was riding on the coattails of my partner to try and break into the TTRPG sphere. Um, He said that I made him uncomfortable and he lied to a lot of other people, including his former partner, about our relationship status. And he lied to me that he was polyamorous and that his former partner knew about me and anyone else he was seeing. Mm. Um, and so I I thought that it was all kosher. Um, and whenever he vented to me a couple of times about about his former partner and I told him to be honest with them and to you know, treat them with kindness and meet them where they were at. And I feel like I I gave him nothing but kindness. And what sucks is my partner also gave him nothing but kindness, invited him to Mm. things, um, interacted with him. Betrayal is so difficult, bro. It's like, why are you doing this? Why do you feel good doing this? How do you lie to people's face like this, bro? I to be nice and Gabe (laughs) met us, uh, met him with silence and me with lies and um i feel very bad for his his former partner because um you know gabe lied about a lot he lied about a lot to a lot of people and while i'm very worried about my you know reputation in the ttrpg community i feel so much worse for for them and what they're going through right now it's so stupid the worst part is that his former partner and I, now that as we've been talking, we realized that if, if he had just been truthful from the start, we would have loved, loved to be each other's metas. But but it's not about that, is it? Did. It's not about that, is it? That's what I'm saying. These people aren't, lo- not not the not the people, the, him, Gabe. Gabe is not looking for love. Gabe wasn't looking for honesty or transparency. Gabe wasn't looking for connection or community. That's what I'm saying. Like, his brain needs to be examined. You know? His brain needs to be literally examined, bro. How do you do this to people? And you think, oh, did you see his apology video? Like, you think that's a good enough apology for what you've just done? He needs to be medically examined. I'm telling you. People that are willing to gaslight, maliciously cheat, blame their partners, call everyone cluster bees, say that women are insane, men are, like, rational, men aren't emotional, and women are, like... All y'all need to get your brains checked, which makes sense, which is why you can radically accept it. So this is hard. I'm trying to react to this as content. And I'm trying to, of course, bring in my, what my niche is, which is like the philosophy angle. So obviously in terms of humanity, this is undignified. This is cruel, beyond cruel. This is so beyond cruel to me. So unnecessary. Obviously there are worse things he could have done. He got to cut off their fingers. Okay. But just within the context of the cruelty, this is pretty fucking cruel to do to people. Right now, I hope none of these people live with like trauma long term from it, because ultimately this is the part of radical acceptance that has to come in. Gabe was making decisions for Gabe and it had nothing to do with your relationship or you guys. Gabe's actions have nothing to do with you. It's going to feel like they have something to do with you. People might even say, well, why'd you push Gabe to cheat on you? People might even say like you obviously contributed. Otherwise, he wouldn't have cheated. No, absolutely not. This is why I say you cannot cheat even if you're being abused because either you think cheating is wrong or not. Being abused isn't an excuse to do bad behavior back to people. But then, of course, there's survival situations in which it makes sense to defend yourself. But how is defending yourself cheating on somebody else, right? So again, I just want to remind people that Gabe's decision to cheat had nothing to do with anyone else but Gabe and his relationship with his morals. So this is where you can learn to radically accept like this had nothing to do with you. Now, the part that did have something to do with you was your choice in choosing him, was your decision to believe him, was your decision to sit there and, you know, not communicate with other partners, not to have conversations with them. Because funny enough, if all of these people had just talked or been able to share their relationship online or been able to be transparent about the fact that they were taken, none of this could have happened. Gabe was able to literally maneuver all of these chess pieces the same way Andrew Huberman did by convincing all of the women he was too much of a public figure for them to go public with their relationships. If you're in love with me, if I'm one of the loves of your life, if I'm the love of your life, and you are ashamed to make me public, you do not want people to know about us, something is suspicious. 
suspicious. Maiden said part of why it's so dis distinctly cruel is because there is no recourse for the victims to take since it was all stayed, it all stayed within the realms of legality and people will use that as an excuse. Well, what did he do that was illegal? What did he do that was illegal? Did he do anything illegal? It's not illegal to cheat. Oh my God, what are you, why are you calling him a, a, a sex pest? Like he didn't do anything illegal. What, what does this have to do with anything? Oh yeah, I've heard that. I hear that feedback all the time. What does it matter if he cheats? What does it matter if he's stringing five women along? He didn't do anything illegal. It's not illegal. It's not about it being illegal. It's about it being immoral. Immoral to the self. It's super unethical, guys. This is not good for society. It is not too good to live in a community where people are backstabbing and talking shit about each other about things that aren't true. So as a society, super unethical. As a person, I think immoral. But if Gabe doesn't think he's doing anything immoral, that's on him. Right? Brooke says, how do we not live in this world without being constantly paranoid? You start to trust yourself. This is where my work comes in. You do not trust the judgment of other people. You trust the judgment of yourself in picking those people. My husband and I married each other pretty quickly, right? Within a, or a year, after a year of knowing each other, we got married. Okay, best decision we ever made and we trusted ourselves to make the decision. When I covered Katie and George and Dream recently in the dramas, I'm not making a decision because I trust George or Dream or Katie. I trust myself to make the judgment. And look, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I disappoint myself with my own judgments. But often I am proving myself time and time again that I make the right judgments for my morals, for me. Because remember, this is about me, baby. You're doing that for you. I am not putting my faith in anyone but myself in choosing my judgment of people. And then I get to decide what to do with it. I have hope Sneeko in 10 years will be a better person. And I'm trusting my judgment in terms of me weighing the pros and cons and the probability of that. But I'm not holding on to the attachment of it either. If he doesn't end up being a good person, what does it matter? Right now, he's not a very good person, but he could be one day. And everyone is relatively good because we're all animals on a planet. So the context in which we judge comes from the context of the situation. Within the context of this situation, completely separate from us being animals or levels of mental health or any of that, no matter what, Gabe has done something incredibly hurtful, painful, and it needs to be held accountable by himself and boundaries need to be set by the community. So it's not that the community needs to hold Gabe accountable. The community needs to set boundaries with Gabe, which by proxy is sort of like holding people accountable, right? Kinder says, is it illegal to falsely accuse someone of stalking and harassment to the point of losing work? Because a lot of people bring that up and about women's false accusations. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. And look, I do think if you falsely accuse somebody of something, you're kind of mentally insane. I almost feel like the best route for these people, because I don't believe in punishment, is actually rehabilitation. I actually think if you want a healthier society, we stop punishing and we do rehabilitation. That's my solution. You don't have to like it, but you guys are so cruel. You just want to punish people anyways. Mm. And that's the irony too, is how eager people are to punish people. They're so eager to punish. And then they wonder why the world is cruel. Look at yourself. I know that, dis like, that I have that feeling too, but that's where discipline comes in. And it says, okay, even though I want to punch your face, I'm not going to punch your face. I'm going to recommend rehabilitation because that is the most good thing to do for society. I know personally I'm upset and I want to punch your fucking ugly face. But I also know that it's not the right answer. But then people will stop there and say, but I feel very justified. What is justice? If you have to make yourself into something so ugly to feel good about what you've done to somebody else, even if it's just as ugly back. So do false accusers need to be punished the way their accusations would have made someone else punished? No, nobody should be punished anyways. People should seek our rehabilitation or if people are past rehabilitation, we need to act with kindness and put them in a facility that isn't going to torture them or justify that torture. It's so ironic that human beings would rather keep people alive to torture them than just to kill them right away. Guillotine. Foom. But guillotine to you people is an easy way out and you don't want to do it. So you become an ugly, disgusting human being that instead justifies the torture of somebody else just to make yourself feel good. And then you have the audacity to claim you're better. How dare you? justify the torture of another human being because they tortured somebody else and then claim you are better than them. How human of you, how fucking human of you to think that is better. He lied a lot 
and now a lot of people are hurt. So if you've heard anything about me through him, please understand that it's not true. To begin at PAX, I was treated really f- fucking horribly. Um, God, this audio is so low. He was really weird and kept dodging me and <gasps> when they were at PAX he kept dodging her probably because he didn't want people to know they were together he was really cold to me and his partner was equally cold granted with the information they had at the time made a lot of sense um his friends were weird their his former partner's friends were weird it makes sense like all of it makes sense now at the time I had no idea why people seemed to be so turned off from my presence and so I just ended up leaving a lot of the time because I didn't know why people were being so mean um so that's that's the truth that's what happened Mm. um I'm not some crazy person I was just manipulated by a master manipulator Um, clearly not someone who actually had a game plan for how he was going to keep all of this under wraps because his behavior is atrocious and it's surprising it didn't come out sooner with how sloppy he was about all of the cheating and all of the lying. So I don't know how to fucking end this video. Bye. And in this video, this was something that I thought was really impressive And this is an organization that had hired and used Gabe as a spokeswoman for their brand. And they are basically saying how they're not going to work with him anymore. And I think, again, that brings into the question, do you want this person representing your brand? With Andrew Huberman, Stanford can make a decision if they want him representing their brand. But, it, it, you know, people were asking, like, what does his cheating have to do with his work? Well, maybe nothing, but it may be everything. But it's about the company. It's about the school. It's about... We fire students. We we expel students from schools because of reputation. You're not going to fire alumni because of reputation? Like, what are we talking about? Do you want these people representing your church? What if you have a priest who's really, really good at being a priest but happens to diddle kids? You're not going to fire the priest? Now, okay, maybe that's a bad example. Because Oh, no. What if it was in Italy where the age of consent is 15? What if the priest was diddling a 15-year-old or just cheating in general? What if the priest was having an affair with a grown-up? Still bad. Still a no-no because it's the reputation of the organization. So again, you can come back from things. But at the end of the day, like, it's not like Gabe took responsibility. It's not like Gabe held himself accountable. I don't think he thinks it's bad what he did. So anyways, let's listen to this guy. Friday, March 22nd, at Cast Party's first ever live show, we announced to the world that Gabe Hicks would be joining Cast Party as a permanent member of our cast for Campaign 2. Right off the bat, with everything that has come to light, we want to rescind that announcement. We have completely pulled our Campaign 2 trailer from all podcasting platforms. We will no longer be working with Gabe Hicks on our upcoming Campaign 2. Every episode that we had backlogged with him to prepare for the launch of Campaign 2 will be refilmed. We'll be starting fresh with Campaign 2 recordings and postponing its launch. We do not want to give a platform to someone who could do such vile things to other individuals, especially those we consider friends in this community. So this is where my morals are more similar. My morals are much more similar. Like, look, I have a lot of interesting people in my lives, but I wouldn't want them representing my brand, even though I love them. I don't want them representing my brand. Does that make sense? So this is much more where my values lie. Like, ideally... Yes, people who are willing to do this to their partners wouldn't be associated with like my, I would fire them. I'd be like, you can't be the face of the brand, bro. You're a horrible person. Like that's a horrible thing to promote is like you as a person. And I know people are saying like, oh, well, it's their life. They're, you know, it's not impacting their job, but like their job is about community. This bubble is about community and it's about having a safe community for people. So it does have to do with this community. You know, it does have to do with their job. Two things before we progress further. First, there will be cuts as I am not good at getting my feelings and thoughts out in one continuous flow. And two, if you do not know what's happening, please do research on your own time. We don't want to dive deeper into this in this video, in the comments, anything at all. There are videos from the victims and we implore you to go listen to and support the victims. We are not Google. Please get your information from the source. To Jillian and their partner Matt, we are so incredibly sorry that Gabe's actions have affected you in the way it has. We were completely unaware of anything that Gabe had been saying throughout the weekend or perhaps even prior 
and we were all genuinely excited to meet the both of you for the first time. We had a blast walking around the con with you, and we hope that showed in our behavior, our intentions, and our actions. To everyone else in the TTRPG community, I can personally attest to both Jillian and Matt's character. Mm. They are wonderful individuals, and I would personally have them on my production at any time. In fact, before all this came out, Jillian and I were chatting about having them on a show of mine. They are both incredible individuals, incredible role players, fantastic GMs, and I implore you to have them on your shows, whether it's an actual play. Ooh, interesting. Going from vouching from one person to another person. And hopefully they're good people. Like, hopefully it's a good vouch. A live stream, anything of the sorts. They are knowledgeable and talented individuals in this community. To Cam and Maisie, we have spoken privately, but I just wanted to reiterate our love and support for you both. We believe you. We support you. We have the utmost love and respect for you. And this includes Jillian and Matt. We found out that after the weekend at PAX East that Gabe had been bad-mouthing our entire crew. Every single one of us as individuals. Oh, even your employers, bro? Gabe is crazy. He needs a therapist. And my heart goes out to his brain. That must be really difficult to have that relationship with your consciousness. He's been bad-mouthing everyone, even his job. And then he came out with that fake-ass apology. He couldn't even deny it, bro. So he didn't even come out denying it, bro. He literally was like, definitely did it. My bad. And then like, that's it. He's like, my bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny. It's not funny, is it? It's very sad. I'm weeping. I'm not weeping like the Holy Mother Mary herself. I'm weeping. Damn, that's rough, bro. Bad mouth your lovers, your lovers' boyfriends, and your employers or slash people. That's crazy. That's a struggling human right there, bro. And our show as a whole. He was saying Damn. terrible things about us behind our backs, both as a team and as a production, Damn. while actively working on an entire 90 plus episode campaign with us. Oh, rough, bro. That's crazy. See, see how my heart, my heart goes out to him. It does. Some part of my stupid brain goes, man, he must be fucked. He must have a very difficult life. How could you have that kind of brain what is going on with his brain bro like genuinely britney wept <laughs> all of all of tacoma and britney wept like my my heart kind of goes out to him gabe is suffering bro you i don't think you can live that existence without major suffering i just don't i don't gabe seemed ecstatic about being a part of campaign too and we were excited to have him and he was the one who agreed to be a part of this Again, 90 episode long campaign. To hear that he was talking poorly about us behind our backs after praising our production quality and everything on our car ride home. By the way, he road tripped with us for 10 hours that weekend. Was so disheartening. Gabe, I don't know if you're ever gonna listen to this or watch this, but I want you to know, your negative words behind our backs brought tears to the eyes of someone that you once called a dear friend and one of the most selfless, loving people that I've ever met in my entire life. And for that, I will never forgive you. I don't Okay, need well, you don't, you need to forgive him so you can move on with your own life. I feel like saying I'll never forgive you is really saying like, I'm never gonna let go that you're a human on the planet. And this is where my work comes in. Guys, Gabe is just a person, just a reminder. He's just like a human. Okay, and some humans do these things. So not forgiving Gabe seems really weird, but it's not about forgiving him and then he's okay. You're forgiving him to let go of the connection you have to the need to hold on to this burden. Don't hold on to this burden. Why would you make your life about Gabe? When you don't forgive people, you're saying that's how important they are in your life. Let them go to live their own life. You guys just cross paths. That's all that happened. Like you just cross paths. Why are you keeping the burden of his memory along with you? What Gabe did had nothing to do with you guys, which is sort of a relief. He did it because that was his own journey. Better to let people live their own journey than to make their life about you. And right now, if you don't forgive people, you're making their life about you, bros. Balto says, do you think Gabe is part sociopath? I mean, does he have antisocial personality disorder or is he a psychopath? Um, maybe I'm not a therapist. I don't fucking know. But he definitely needs therapeutic help. Whatever he's doing is pathological. Even feel like I can celebrate one of our biggest achievements as a show because you were on stage with us. What was supposed to be an enormous accomplishment. Nah, nah, nah. Don't let this man ruin your life, bros. Okay, nah, 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 nah. Do not, I know they're hurting right now. 
But Brittany's word of advice, you don't have to take it, is do not let this man let you carry this burden with you. But also, you know, it might take some time to like get over it, right? For cast party, our first ever live. March says people are lessons. Sometimes they last a lifetime and sometimes it's short lived. True. Live show now feels tainted because of what you did to the victims. Ah, uh, nah, I'm not gonna let some man taint my experience. Nah, 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 nah. We want to give our sincerest apologies, love, and support. I am be. No, no. Hannah says people talk shit about each other all the time, especially in working relationships. So this part feels like dumb to include. No, 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 no. There's a difference between talking shit, which coworkers do, people do all the time, and maliciously lying about people in order for them not to keep their jobs. That is totally fucking different. He wasn't just talking shit, right? Like people talk shit all the time, but you're supposed to be able to talk shit to face. So like, no, no, no. It sounds like he was maliciously pitting people against each other. Like it was super malicious. Look, I used to talk shit about people I work to. I talk shit all the time on air, on stream where people can see me. Guys, it's different talking shit in public where people can see you and talking shit in private where you think it's never going to be heard. And then you have to be ready to face yourself if it is heard. Like you can't talk shit about people and then lie to their faces about other things, right? That's totally different. Beyond happy to see that Gabe has deleted all forms of social media. So he can never do this to anyone else again. Our hearts go out from everyone on the team to the victims involved in this. Our DMs are open if anyone needs any extra details from me, uh, any of our cast or anything like that. So. Is he using a filter? His face looks super filtered to me. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's it. That's the story. Okay. And, oh, shout out to, what's this TikToker's name? There's a TikToker. Helene! Nope, sh ignore that. There's a TikToker, this girl, oh. niche girl. Uh, this is the girl that I originally got the story from. I'll share it in the chat. I didn't watch her whole video, but um, my partner did because he's in the D&D &D community and he was just, or not in the DD, he plays D&D. &D. It's not in the community like that, but you know what I mean? And he was trying to tell me, like he was trying to explain it to me because like I don't do D&D. Um, and she has been sent to me by you guys. You guys have tagged me in this girl's videos. This girl here, if you've ever seen her, she does like niche drama in communities. And so this was one that came up. So like I said, I'm not in the D&D &D community myself. You know, everyone in my life or people I've always known my whole life have played D&D. &D. Like I've always known people, even pff, Abba plays D&D. &D, my partner plays D&D. &D, everyone I know plays D&D. Like people play D&D. &D. It's just like a thing nerds do when I date nerds. So, okay. I'm friends with nerds. My friends play it. My friends all in Seattle, we used to go to tabletop like bars to play these games, but I was never in the community. So I never really paid attention to the drama. I really, I didn't know anyone's names. I don't know what, like I just, D&D &D stresses me out. So I'm not that person, but yet all my friends are, which is like kind of funny. You know what I mean? And so now that I'm sort of realizing like, oh, this is a bubble pop for me. Why do you think it is? And this is the question I want to post for my community. Okay. Why do you think it is? Well, n no, no, no. Let me say it like this because I'm, I'm, I'm sure the question is. Let's brainstorm. Is it even worse when you get into a community that's supposed to be progressive, when people are supposed to know better and then they don't? Because I know when I first got into underground BDSM communities and I was like really excited to be there, one of the reasons I loved being there is because they centered consent as a big part of the community. I care about your consent. I care about STIs. I care about not lying to you. But then it was filled with lots of rarely, not lots. There was like, let's say one to every 20 people was like a predator or someone shitty. Eh, that's pretty, I think, one to one to like regular quote society. But it was disheartening. You know, I do think some of the best experiences of I, I've ever had in my life happened in BDSM communities and sex positive communities. But I also think it was much like rougher Realizing like, oh, even predators are attracted to our communities. And that's so painful, I think, in some ways. But that's also why I removed myself from the communities. Because as much as I love having my community online, I just know the drama follows people. And then sometimes people will say things on stream. I mean, God, how many times does Sneeko have to be caught? How many times does Destiny have to be caught? How many times do these people have to be caught? How many times do we have to have girl after girl after girl who has stories and then people are just like, whatever, we like them. And I like them too, but I don't like them enough to vouch for them. I don't like them enough to like not tell people to stay away from them. I don't like them enough for a lot of reasons, right? It's like a principled issue. 
But yet it does kind of bother me more that the same people who talk about like, you know, sex is important. You got to have sex. You got to like communicate with people. You got to treat people right. Aren't treating people right. You know, that's so frustrating to me, I think. Especially when there's so much potentiality and this is my crime. I got to stop living, pre you know, people's potential is always my like, oh, they have so much potential, but I'm like, oh. So I do think it's kind of harder to realize like these communities, even though they're so well-intentioned or seem like they are, do attract horrible people. I remember the controversy with the quartering. Do you guys know Jeremy? Um, he was a part of, oh, what community was he a part of? My friends were a part of the same community and worked with the organizers. And they were really excited that Jeremy got banned from the community. Which, what tabletop game were they in? Oh, I don't know, these nerd bubbles. I think it's the one where you paint figurines. I don't know. And I remember thinking like, oh, I know Jeremy. We smoked weed one time at a convention. He was nice. And they're like, yeah, but he's an asshole. And he is. Jeremy is like a horrible person to hang out with. He's just like a bad community member. But, but did he deserve to get banned? And a part of me was like, yeah, if you want to keep the community cohesive, you got to ban the mean autists. And that's sort of ironic. Like, you want to invite people into your communities, especially ones that are having a harder time communicating, but you also have to ban them, right? These are all neurodivergent people, by the way. Like, you know, it's so interesting when you think about it from that perspective. You're like, oh, yeah, why are we so mean? Like, why are there mean people? Uh, you guys are saying 40K, Warhammer. I don't know which one it is, but I, he was banned from one of the communities. And when I think about that, I think like, yeah, you do kind of have to ban these people. Because they're just in insufferable to get along with. You know what I mean? And you want to have like a good community. So when people say, what, do, what does it have to do, their hobby, their job, their community, with what they do to their partners? And it's kind of like because it shows up in the community, bro. It really does show up in the community how you treat people. And then, especially if we're having a conversation where we're like, hey, you need to treat people with dignity. You can't just cheat on people. And people are like, who cares? You're saying it's okay to cheat on the person you told is like the love of your life. And we don't think that's going to somehow like impact the community. You know, I don't know how it, it doesn't end up. It always seems to impact the community as much as we think it won't. You know, Brooke says, I think part of the reason I'm so paranoid is that I don't have experiences and only have heard what happens from my circle, not having any experience myself and being so scared. I will say this, a big, big lesson in adulting is taking that risk. So in so many ways, you do have to take the risk in order to know yourself. And the question is, how do you suffer wisely, right? How do you make the decision or how do you make good decisions in choosing people? You learn who isn't the good people. You know what I mean? And I think that's like what's really difficult is, look, I had to learn the hard way. You're probably going to have to learn the hard way. Everyone around us is going to have to learn the hard way. And for some people, they give people zero chances the moment they come into their life. And look, this is my, you want to know my biggest fear? I'm going to be very vulnerable with you right now. I am worried that I am going to give up on somebody or misjudge somebody who genuinely was a good person and genuinely a victim. And I'm going to assume they're a bad person. I am terrified of assuming the worst of people because I know how easy it is for us to misjudge people whether we're misjudging them for being good people or bad people. So I am like genuinely terrified because I know so many people are just fucked and troubled, but in their heart of hearts, they're probably not the worst people. So I try not to give up on people too easily. And also I know people are just doing what they think is right, even when they're being cruel. They're just doing the thing they think is the right thing to do, even if they know it's the wrong thing to do. And because I don't believe in objective morals, I know it's hard It's hard for me to judge somebody outside of my own bubble. Like, because once I jump into their bubble, I'm like, oh, I see why you did that. And then when I jump into my bubble, I'm like, why did you do that? Well, they did it because they literally, like, they came up with all these logical reasons. They logic bro themselves into the corner. They make so much sense to them. They had so such good reasoning for why they did what they did. That a part of me knows, like, yeah, I guess, like, if I was in that situation, I would have made the same decision. But also, thank God I'm never in that position because, like, I'm not like you. But also, I can't have you in my community because you're going to make it worse for people. So how do you validate the individual in their journey and also have a community? Honestly, bros, I don't know. So I don't do it. Now, in my Discord community, 
we we do a few things to protect people. We make it 18 plus. We make people pay entry fees. We um we mod, but very minimally. I'm the only mod, and I'm well. I have one mod who helps me with tech stuff, but I mod and ban people, and I'm very selective. But genuinely, I have had to ban people from my Discord, just a couple, because they were as much as they were a victim, as much as they had interesting, complex like ways of existing, they were ruining the vibe. They were literally ruining it for people. They were making people not want to come back, and it was because regardless of how much pain and how much they've been a victim. Just them existing on my Discord made new victims because they were so hurt they'd hurt other people. And that's frustrating. That is like a frustrating position to be in. You're almost looking at somebody that's victimized by their own brain or their own relationship with their consciousness and you're literally rejecting them and saying, I'm so sorry, your pain and suffering isn't worth my time. That sucks. That sucks for me to have to do, but that is what we're doing. We're looking at these people who have obviously been so fucking traumatized and we're saying, I'm so sorry. Out of all the victims in the world, I'm going to care about you less. And I'm going to choose somebody else to care about. It's so obvious to me that what we do in order to, what we do in order to justify this action is to convince ourselves they're not really a victim and they don't deserve our compassion. So many people were, most people were very happy with my covering of Katie and George. Some people were like, I can't believe you're like defending her. I'm explaining her. I'm explaining how she could feel like she was sexually assaulted and how George didn't intend to do it. Because in this situation, it's very true. And a lot of situations like this guy, like Gabe, I don't think I could tell you that he genuinely miscommunicated, but I could tell you he's probably really fucked in the head. No matter how we'd like to pretend otherwise, Gabe has got to be fucked in the head in order to do this. Or if you don't consider this a fucked up action, then I'm not sure how you couldn't think it's he's fucked in the head. Because that's the, the contradiction to me. How do you do this and not be fucked in the head? But then what does fucked in the head mean? How could, you, how could you not be fucked in the head? Even when people abuse or gaslight or do other things to people, they are actually kind of fucked in the head, but not in a permanent sense. In a perceived sense, they are misperceiving the situation. Dr. Kirkonda talked about this recently, and I used him in a clip the other day, where he said, he's a therapist, he said most of the abusers who come into his office don't perceive themselves as abusers. That's kind of a version of what I mean by fucked in the head. You don't perceive yourself as an abuser as you're abusing someone. You're not literally fucked in the head. Like your brain doesn't have like a fucking dent in it or something. But your perception, which is so important, which is everything, is perceiving your actions as justified and non-abusive. And that's interesting. Right? So my brain goes, okay, then I know you're fucked in the head. So I have a compassion version of me for that. I can suffer with you. Compassion means to suffer with. So I'm suffering with you. Okay, you're fucked in the head. What do I do now? Fuck, I have to hold boundaries. I can be compassionate and still hold boundaries. I love you. I like you. You seem to be really working on it, but also you seem not to be working on it. Depends on who I'm talking about. I still have to have a boundary with myself. Whether you're working on it or not, I still need to be open, but with boundaries. So Gabe made decisions, super unethical, by the way, justified them in his own sense by not holding himself accountable or really understanding how he hurt people. And he's not somebody who's really like understanding what he did. I don't, from the apology video we saw of him, I don't think he really understands what he did. I think, he, well, let me rephrase. I don't think he understands, no, I don't think he believes what he did was as cruel as it was. Mm, that's even worse. Ooh, that's even worse. I don't believe that he believes what he did is as cruel as it was. And at the same time, it certainly isn't as cruel as other things he could have done. But it's still fucking cruel, bro. And it certainly wasn't a mistake of mis miscommunication. It certainly wasn't 
a simple miscommunication. It was purposely done with intent, calculated, organized. And that's why I'm open with boundaries, but I don't want to talk to people like this. These people need help that I just don't think most of us are qualified for. And honestly, I don't think a lot of us have enough compassion to help them. I don't think most people have enough compassion to help them. I have enough compassion to say, I would love to see you get help. I don't have enough compassion to really like study this brand of brain and try to go into therapy and try to help them because I do think they need therapeutic intervention, you know? And I think that that's what I'm trying to get society to recognize is it's not as compassionate as it thinks it is. Society is not as empathetic as it thinks it is. No one, none of us are as empathetic. Sometimes I'll get this criticism on my videos that's like, for a girl who's all about popping bubbles, you certainly don't do it all the time. And I'm like, yeah, because you think I'm preaching some universal, I'm better than you, I'm more compassionate than you, I'm smarter than you, when I'm literally preaching the opposite, but you can't hear me because you still un live under this illusion that that's somehow attainable. I in no way, shape, or form think I could ever be universally compassionate. I don't think I'm universally introspective. I've never met a person who is like this. I've never in the history of all of the thousands of books I've read, thousands of people I've talked to, so many humans I have met, ever met a person I thought was universally compassionate. Would, if anything, it has proven to me time and time again that people are biased and prejudiced and we all have our shortcomings. So this illusion that people keep typing on my videos, wow, Brittany, I can't believe you can't understand where he's coming from. Even if I could, it doesn't mean I'm going to tolerate it. Understanding where people are coming from is about you. I'm giving you a tool to heal yourself, not other people. I'm giving you a tool to not go to sleep stressed. I'm giving you a tool to be less paranoid. I'm giving you a tool that says it's worth the risk. You got to try sometimes and you got to get hurt in the process, but it's worth it. You can't live a life where you shelter yourself. You got to live a life where you try. You can do it with caution. You can do it with wisdom. But you will run into a Gabe in your life and you'll have to learn what to do with him. And it's probably create distance. That doesn't mean you have to wish for him to get punished. It doesn't mean you have to wish him to be hurt because how does that make you a better person wishing cruelty on somebody else? What is that saying? An eye for an eye makes the world go blind? Girl! So I pay attention to what people say about themselves now. I think it's the greatest lesson I can learn. And I can still hold out hope. I still have hope, but it's not hope that needs to be in the forefront of my mind. Moving into 2024, as I move through this year, I've definitely started to pick and choose my battles with more wisdom. And again, I think I'll die an unwise person, but I think that's something that we all should practice. So, you know, I wish the best for Gabe. I wish him health and happiness so he can stop mistreating people. Wishing good for Gabe is wishing good for the community. Wishing bad on people is wishing bad for your community. I wish Gabe health and healing so we can have a better community. I'm not a part of that community's bubble, but you know what I'm saying? Gabe is a representation for our communities. Ghosties, ghostify says people like this usually reject the idea of therapy, etc. It's sad in a way because they'd rather stay in their shitty behavior than put the work in to heal themselves to stop use of cycles. Well, Gabe said he's looking for a therapist, but also people use therapy as a way to pretend they're getting the help they need. Which is what I think Clay did on Love is Blind, right? But yeah, lots of people will not get therapy. And in some ways... That's why your communities have to have boundaries and say, like, you can't be in the community. I'm so sorry. And it's not because you're gay. It's not because of your religion. It's not because of your skin color. It's because of your character. So when people ask, once again, why does it matter that Andrew Huberman led five, six people on and did horrible things to these women? What does that matter when it comes to his work? And we're talking about character. And I think any business, any good company, any good organization would want to have people with good character. Unless you are specifically the kind of person that is running a business trying to help people with bad character learn how to have good character. See, I could understand if you choose somebody with bad character to be in your company because you are trying to teach them to have good character, right? 
But if you're not actually going to help them be a better person, then I do think it says a lot about you that you'd want them representing your company. And I think it's interesting that you'd want to work with them even if they're a bad person. Though, of course, and here's a philosophy exercise for you, a moral exercise, a challenge for you. What if the only person who could cure cancer on the planet was also a Nazi? Do we work with them or do we not? It's like, well, yeah, but we also don't maybe promote them as like the arbiter of everything good. You know what I mean? Maybe the person who can cure cancer is a Nazi, but we don't also put them at the forefront of our brand and don't support them as the greatest, strongest mind. Instead, we recognize like bad people can contribute good to society and good people can contribute bad. Good people can do bad things and bad people can do good things. That doesn't mean we don't have boundaries. That doesn't mean as a society we don't have boundaries. But you have to recognize that first. I think people think like good people do good things and bad people do bad things. If only, right? How easy would life be if that was the case? How easy would life be if good people did good things and bad people did bad things? Oh my God. If only. But because there's that nuance, because good people do bad things and bad people do good things, we have to then ask ourselves, which one are we and how do we feel about that? How do we feel about the way we contribute to society? And even though we're good people, are we going to recognize when we've been bad? And again, these are all subjective terms based off your bubble, based off of like what you think about the world. I don't know if you think you were here because of aliens or God or biology, but like all of this is subjective. Nothing I'm saying has anything to do with objective outside of your perception. All of this is about our, is about a construct we've created, right? So that's even the, the weirdest part of this is like none of this is objective. I'm not trying to make a prescription for 8 billion people. I'm just saying, what construct do you want to create? What's the bubble? Or do you want to create your own bubble away from the other bubbles, but within the bubbles, because ultimately we all live on planet that's occupied. Right? <sighs> you know? Yeah. I think people with good character are reliable. And I think why cheating is so hurtful is like you're not reliable. I think reliability is the number one characteristic of a good person. And reliability in a good way, not a bad way. You are reliably a cheater. It's not the kind of reliability I'm talking about. Reliability to be helpful and good and well-meaning. I think if you're reliable when it comes to getting to work on time, paying your bills on time, being good to your community, I think all of that is good, a good sign of character right? It's a good sign of discipline. It's a good sign of everything, you know? Yeah. Trolling says, is it bad to be sexist? Uh, depends on what you mean by sexist, but generally speaking, yeah, it's pretty bad to be sexist, right? In my opinion, it's probably not helpful. Survival sexism or having like a prejudice I think is really normal, but I would say generally speaking, it's pretty bad to be sexist. You know what I mean? Like you're making a generalization. If sexism means to be generally negative thinking about someone's gender and that person because they are said gender, then yeah, sexism is bad, right? But I don't know if that's what you're talking about, right? Generally speaking, I wish we didn't have to work with bad people and I wish society could be without them. And by bad people, I mean people that are willing to maliciously use and abuse people for their own benefit with no desire to be different. But at the same time, that's not what humans are doing. That's not what the world we live in. And that is a part of radical acceptance. So ultimately, how does this like little drama bubble play into what my work is about? Radically accepting like this is what humans are. Humans are going to human. This isn't all humans, but this is a specific kind of human. And these types of humans are my least favorite. They really are. With no rhyme or reason. So it's not like a belief system. It's not even an ideology. It's a pathology. 
They will hurt, harm, and maliciously impact people around them. And without the right kind of inter intervention, it's just a guessing game on why. At least if they had an ideology or a religion or a belief system, you could be like, okay, so they believe this, which is why they did this. But with people like Gabe Hicks, it's apparent, maybe I'm wrong, it seems to be that he doesn't even have an ideology to refer to. And so my next thought process is like, well, if it's not an ideology, a religion, a belief, a political system, a specific, you know, belief, then it's got to be internal. Some sort of problem with the brain, problem with his morals, no relationship with the self. And so that puts him in a category that I find the most frustrating because I can't even start to dismantle it because one, it's outside of my wheelhouse. It's outside, it's way above my pay grade. And two, it means we're gonna have to deal with people like this in our lives. And the most, the most we can do is ban them from our communities and maybe even like Christmas dinner. But we all have to do what we need to do to create boundaries in order to maintain our sanity, right? This is definitely not healthy, happy, or kind, right? There's definitely nothing healthy about what Gabe Hicks did. Nothing happy about what he did. It's definitely not kind. It do doesn't even, it's not even one of the three bros. That used to be my criteria for a lot of things. It still is for myself. Is it happy, healthy, or kind? Or hopefully all three. It's none of those. Gabe didn't even pass the test by hitting one of the points. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. He didn't even ha hit any of them. Healthy, happy, or kind. None of them. That's, you really fucked up, bro. When you fuck up that bad, you need to reassess your life. You need to. If you want to be more introspective. If you want to be a better version of yourself. But if you don't want to be, then don't listen to me. In my head, in real life I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Da, 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 da.